Hi, I'm Sue Coyne, leadership and team coach and author of Stop Doing, Start Leading, how to shift from doing the work yourself to becoming a great leader. In this series of sound bites, I explore the topic of sustainable leadership. In this seventh sound bite, we look at the second aspect of Triple H leadership, being a healthy leader. Operating to a wider definition of sustainable success based on the three H's of being happy, healthy and high performing requires further rewiring of your brain. More on how to do this later. The belief that we've had and that many still have currently is that it's okay to work long hours or do whatever it takes to deliver on short term financial objectives. This leads to stress and ultimately burnout. So what keeps us stuck in this mindset? Many of us have been brought up to believe that it's not okay to be selfish and put ourselves first. I've worked with clients who, when I asked them to draw a picture of their own lives, realized they didn't even feature in them. This not only saddened them, but it also made them realize that they needed to change the limiting beliefs that have created this situation. The new belief that many of them have chosen to support themselves in becoming sustainable leaders is I am the instrument through which I make my difference as a leader. It's therefore part of my job as a leader to look after that instrument before doing anything else. Only then will I be able to make the difference that I want to make to the lives of others. So what benefits does being healthy bring? Isn't it true that when you're fit and healthy you handle stress better? You have more energy and you feel a greater sense of well-being. According to research from the Center for Creative Leadership, executives who are physically fit are considered to be more effective leaders than those who aren't. So there's now evidence to link looking after your health with more sustainable high performance at work and enhance leadership competence. When I refer to health for leaders, I regard it as having three key aspects, brain health, stress management and healthy beliefs. Brain health, it's your competitive advantage. Science used to think that our brain was fixed once we became an adult and that it degraded with age. In the past decade, however, neuroscientists have discovered that our brain has neuroplasticity. This means that our brain has a lifelong capacity to change and rewire itself, meaning we can continually learn throughout life. So brain health is about retaining the neuroplasticity of your brain. So as a leader, maintaining the neuroplasticity of your brain is part of your job. So how do you do this? Through continually learning things that you don't already know how to do. Through regular exercise which gets more oxygen to the brain. Through eating plenty of green vegetables and good oils. And through getting seven to nine hours sleep a night. Stress. Don't let it get you down. Another key aspect of health and well-being of a leader is being able to handle stress. Our brain is wired to sense danger and put us into fight, flight, freeze to help us survive the danger. And because we need all the energy to run or fight, our brain shuts down our prefrontal cortex, which is where we have our short-term memory and do all our best thinking and planning. This completely disables us from operating effectively as leaders. Also, stress hormones such as cortisol and adrenaline are released into our system. This is okay in short bursts, but as many leaders are operating in a stressful state for extended periods, the ongoing presence of these hormones in the body can cause health problems. In order to enhance our ability to cope with stress, we need to change our attitude. Mindfulness can help with this. It slows us down, helps us to remain calm and be more present in the moment. For many, exercise is another effective way to reduce stress. Your beliefs can keep you healthy. We've already said that our hardwired beliefs become outdated and hold us back. So how do we update these hardwired limiting beliefs? The first step is to bring these limiting beliefs to conscious awareness. And as they've been in place for so long, they're buried deep in the subconscious and it takes patience and skill to bring them to the surface. Once you've identified your limiting beliefs, you can identify what would be a more empowering set of new beliefs, given the outcomes that you want to bring about. Neuroscience has shown us that you can't just overwrite these existing beliefs which are hardwired into neural pathways in your subconscious brain. The only way is to create new neural pathways for the new beliefs that you identify. 
In order to hardwire a new belief, we need to focus on it enough over time that it becomes embedded in our subconscious. Here are the steps involved in hardwiring new beliefs. Revise. Having identified your limiting beliefs, you need to develop some positive, empowering beliefs that will help you achieve the outcomes you want. Repeat. Every time an old limiting belief comes up, you substitute it with the new one. Refine. As you act on the new beliefs, notice how effective you're being or get feedback and refine them accordingly. Rewire. With enough focus, attention and repetition, the new belief will become hardwired. Learning to more consciously choose your thoughts and behaviours is important as a sustainable leader as you have an impact on those around you. Are you leading in a sustainable way that ensures you and your people are thriving? If you want to know more about becoming a sustainable leader, get my book, Stop Doing, Start Leading, How to Shift from Doing the Work Yourself to Becoming a Great Leader. It's available on Amazon or on my website, suecoin.com.